We've explored the mathematical relationships between distance of an image and object, height of an image and object, when light is refracted through a lens. Now let's use ray diagrams to visualize what's happening. When we use a lens to create an image, we need to be able to describe that image. If it's a real image, it's on the opposite side of the lens as the object. If it's a virtual image, it's on the same side of the lens as the object. If it's right side up, it's standing in the same direction as the object. If it's inverted, it's upside down compared to the object. And then we discuss, discuss relative sizes. Is it larger, smaller, etc.? We'll be dealing with two types of lenses. The first is a converging or convex lens. There are two focal points. One's in front and one is behind. The focal point is halfway between the center of curvature and the lens. If you continued the rounded edge of that lens, it would create a circle. The center of that circle is called the center of curvature. It's exactly twice the distance of the focal point. With a convex converging lens, parallel light rays will come in, refract, and bend toward the focal point. To visualize what's happening with the light rays, we start with the type of lens, in this case converging. I know it's converging because it's bulging out. I have my two focal points listed as well. I need to start with an object. So we're given an object. Notice the object has a certain direction that it's pointed. In this case, we know the arrow is pointing upward. This will help us determine if it's uh, going the same side or same direction or if it becomes inverted. When I draw my my light ray diagram, I start from the top of the object and go straight to the lens. Light always travels in straight lines. So I have my object, I have my two focal points, and I'm going to go straight in and bend through the focal point. So straight in and then aim it down at the focal point. These are straight lines, so I would use a straight edge like a ruler. For step two, I'm going to do quite the opposite. Since there's two focal points, in step one, I went straight and then through the opposite side focal point. Now I'm going to go through the same side focal point, same side as the object, and when I hit the lens, I'm going to go straight. Step one goes straight and bends to the focal. Step two bends to the focal point and then goes straight. The image is located where the two refracted rays cross. So it starts at that middle equilibrium line, and then it points towards where they cross. In this case, the head of the arrow, or the point of the arrow, hits the point where those rays cross. This image is real because it's on the opposite side of the lens. Lens. It's inverted because it's upside down compared to the object, and smaller compared to the original object. If the object is inside the focal point, we can do the exact same steps, but we'll see different images or different versions of the image. So I'm going to start with my object right there. I'm going to go straight to the lens and then bend to the focal point on the opposite side. In this case, since we are inside the focal point, we can't go through it to hit the lens but we still need to use it as a guide. In this case, I would line up my focal point and the top of my object with a ruler. Follow that line, and then once it hits the lens, it's going to go straight out. So again, step one, I go from the top of my object straight to the lens, and then bend through the focal point. Step two, we bend from the focal point, and then go straight once it hits the lens. It refracts and bends. The image is always formed where the two lines cross. In this case, though, do they cross to form an image? They do not cross on the opposite side 
However, if the rays do not cross on the opposite side, we can extend the refracted rays backwards to see if they meet. So my lines on the opposite side of the lens, I'm going to extend them straight back. Again, I can just use a ruler to draw in those dotted lines. Those lines are not actually there, but they're being represented. This is where my new image is represented. It's on the same side as the object, which tells us a lot about this specific image. This is virtual. If the image is on the same side as the object, it's virtual. It's upright because the arrow is pointing upward, same direction as the object. And then it's larger. We can tell that because next to each other, this image is taller. Converging lenses, or sorry, concave diverging lenses have a different set of rules. There are two focal points again, one in front, one behind. The focal point is a halfway between the center of curvature. That center of curvature is the circle created by the curve of the lens. The center of curvature is the point dead center. It's exactly twice the focal length. Incident rays traveling parallel to this principal axis are refracted out. So instead of being focused on a focal point, they're refracted out. However, the angle that they're refracted out at is based on the focal point that's on the other side. Let's start with an object outside of the focal point. It's the same exact process. Go straight in and bend towards the focal point. However, since it's bending the light outward, it's diverging, I need to use the focal point that's on the same side as the object. So it goes in, and then based on the angle of that, it bends out. Now I'm going to bend towards the other focal point and then have it bend straight out once it hits that lens. So I'm aiming at the other focal point, but when it hits the lens, it's going to go straight. In this case, do they cross to form an image? In this case, it may look like they're crossing on the left side of the lens, but you need to make sure that it's the refracted ray, not the incident ray, that is meeting. In this case, the blue dotted line is crossing over the red solid line. In order to see if, them, if they cross, we would have to extend the red line backwards. That shows an image. This image is virtual, upright, and smaller. This is always the type of image you get with a diverging lens. Every single time, it's going to be virtual, upright, and smaller. We can also represent and visualize the equations that we studied yesterday. So if we have our object, we draw our line, it goes straight to the lens and then bends through the focal point. The second one goes straight through the focal point and then once it hits the lens, it bends straight out. This is for a converging or convex lens. The arrow on the left is my object. The arrow on the right is my image. Each one has a particular height. Each one has a particular distance. If I look at this mathematically, I see two similar triangles. Their height of the object and height of the image line up. The distance of the image, the distance of the object lines up. And I already know that they share at least two uh, angles. So this is where we get the ratio hi-ho equals di over do. This is called the magnification equation. In the labs, we derive two other formulas. 1 over do plus 1 over di equals 1 over f. And then, of course, hi-ho equals di do. Using your formula sheet and the given information, you should be able to figure out which formula to use.